Okay, so we have our pamphlet started, but we don't have um, the book pages bound. So what you're going to need from your pamphlet is the, na the nail, this yarn uh, and needle, piece of computer paper, obviously your book, and scissors just to cut the yarn, and a mark making tool, whether that's a pencil or a pen or sharpie, it doesn't really matter. So the reason we need the computer paper is because we need a measuring tool so we know where to poke holes to do our binding. So first, I'm going to just fold my paper in half so that I have my pamphlet size leaf. So again, I fold it and rip like we did yesterday, and then I'm going to fold this again. So this is the same thing that's in here. I'm not going to add that in here. This is my measuring tool. Now, if I want to make holes to bind on my spine that are three holes that are perfectly equal distant, you could use a ruler, but that involves math, and I don't really want to do math, so I always show my students how to cheat. So I'm going to take my paper using the same size, this is the same size paper, and I'm going to fold it in half towards myself, like a hamburger, right? And give it a good crease, and then fold it again towards me, like that. Now, the magic, again, with the magic, um, when I open this up, Wherever these folds are, are perfectly equal distant, and that tells me where my one, two, three holes should go. So what I'm gonna do first is open this up. I'm gonna make marks where those folds are so that I know. And then we're gonna use our nail to punch holes through the spine or the gutter. This is called an awl. This is a proper bookmaking tool that you would normally use, but because we can't provide it, all of you with one. I dug through my uh, basement and found a whole bunch of nails that you could do the same thing with. So the only difference is this is a lot thicker, so we're only going to do a couple, uh, like maybe one or two pages at a time. And we're going to use this as our pin cushion so we're not stabbing through your work surface, your table, so your parents don't kill me for marking up the, the tables. <laughs> so what you're going to do first, let's open this up, and I'm just going to start with one page and put this on top inside so the gutters line up like that right there's my spine and gently hold this over my pin cushion make sure that these are really nice in line so i'm holding them nice and tight on the top and the bottom and i'm just going to put the nail into my pin cushion and lift it up punch through again i'm using this as my sort of pin cushion and again i like to hold the pages a little bit folded so that they don't slide and move around because i don't want to punch holes anywhere else now i have my good first piece of paper let's try two pieces there's two pieces of paper here i'm going to put that on top and again this is like my template i'm going to hold it a little bit folded like this and again on top of my pin cushion or my yarn i'm going to poke it and lift this actually works a lot better than the all when we do this in the classroom, so I might use this forever. This is a good sort of pandemic invention. Um, I think two pages works really well. So again, I'm just gonna keep stacking them and poking through two pages at a time. I'm only doing two at a time because I don't want my pages to fold if I try to poke through too many at a time. There's no rush. And then my last two here. And again, I'm always folding it, making sure that they're stack neatly so all those holes line up and again just make sure that that's underneath you don't want to mark up the table that you're working on okay so now i'm going to go back through the other direction just to make sure that the hole is uh all the way through so now i'm actually pushing the nail all the way through because this hole needs to be big enough for our big fat plastic yarn thread to go through later when we're sewing so I always like to go back through the other way. And again, I'm holding this tight. If you have a binder clip or a paper clip, that might be a good idea just so your pages don't slide around. Now that my inside pages are nice and punched, um, now I'm gonna do the covers. Now the cover pages are thicker, so I'm gonna just do one at a time. And I actually am gonna go back to this because uh, I don't wanna ruin my good inside pages. So again, I'm gonna hold that nice and tight over the pin cushion and poke one at a time. I'll do my last one here. And again, I'm stacking them all together so that I know that those line up. Okay. So now, one last time, I'm going to get rid of that template, folded template. I'm going to put this on top. And again, just make sure all these holes align by putting that nail all the way through. 
pushing the nail onto my pin cushion and voila. Now I may go ahead and let me see, I think I have a paper clip here. Around. Actually a binder clip would be even better. But if you have a paper clip, I would keep this bound together so that these pages don't move while you're sewing them. So now what you want to do is this is painter's tape. It should be able to be reused even though it's got yarn all over it. So save this because we're going to use that for our project here. So the yarn, I only need about the length of my arm. Let's see if I can, <laughs> you can't see here. My arm is not very long, so I'm going to use the length of my arm and cut this. If I had a ruler, maybe, I'm being generous with the length of my arm, I have short arms, so maybe it would be about 24 inches. Um, my arm is definitely, I don't know how long it is, I'll have to measure it later. Okay, so now I want to grab my needle and you want to push your needle, or your, sorry, your yarn through the eye of the needle. Let me just come up a little bit closer so you can see. What I like to do is just put the yarn sort of at the, you know, kind of covering the hole of the needle and push my nail through and then see if I can pull that through. Um, if you have, actually you do have a needle threader, but I'm just going to use this nail to kind of push that through. Okay. All right, so once you get that through. Now, you don't want to tie a knot. Usually, if any of you sew, you would tie a knot here. Well, if you tie a knot, you're not going to be able to get the knot through the hole. So I'm going to just leave a little bit of a tail, like not too long. If you make the tail too long, then you're doubling the yarn, and that might make it harder to go through here. So the first thing I'm going to do, let me just move that tape for a second. I want to bind first. This is the outside of the book. This is called the spine. On the inside, this is called the gutter. So on the inside of the book, in the gutter, I want to start with my needle through the middle hole, going through to the back. And now again, I said this eye is pretty big and the holes maybe not, so you might need to kind of rotate and give it some muscle until you get that through. Now on the inside, what's happening is my yarn is going through the hole. And when I get to here, I want to leave a little bit of a tail because we're going to tie that off later. And this is where that tape comes in. I'm going to take that tape and just tape that on the inside. This painter's tape is not going to rip this paper later, so it's, it's really nice. It's going to hold the yarn nice and tight. Now, I'm on the back and I'm coming out the middle hole. I'm just going to pick, I'll just go up one of the sides. So now I'm going to go back in through the top or the left side, whichever. It doesn't matter. Just one of the other holes. And again, from the inside, I want to kind of rotate and pull that really hard, give it some muscle. Now, as I pull it from the outside, notice I want to make sure that that's nice and tight. And on the inside, this is where I'm at. Now, this is where a lot of students get confused. From here, pulling this nice and tight, I want to go back through the middle hole. So if you think about any time you're sewing from the inside, you're always going to go through the middle hole. So I'm creating a loop going through the middle hole. And in the end, it's almost like you're sewing like a figure eight. And you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to pull that nice and tight. So right now, from the inside, I just have the bottom sewn, the bottom on the outside. Now, flipping back to the outside, obviously, I want to go back through that other hole. So I'm going to go, I'm just rotating it so I can put that in there. And again, give it some muscle, pull that nice and tight. And then once I'm in the inside, I'm done. I don't need to sew anymore. So now I'm going to take my needle off. You want to sew this, save this needle. We're going to use it for another project later. So I'm going to put that right back in there and take my tape off and put my tape on here so my yarn doesn't come apart. So I'm actually using the tape again, if, if possible, maybe a leather tape and just taping that and save this for later. Uh, I can put my nail away. I'm kind of done with all that. Now, this is where our students get a little confused because we're just going to tie a knot. But crazily enough, because sometimes we all have Velcro shoes or slip-ons, we don't know how to tie. So I'm just going to make an X, for those of you who don't know. I'm going to put this little string um, around that top string, so underneath, and pull that string through. As I pull it tight, I'm here. Right now my knot's in the middle. I'm going to pull this string towards the middle hole and pull that string towards the middle hole. Now, this is the one problem where if we're in the classroom, you can have another student hold the knot for you while you do it again. Uh, in this case, I don't have that, so I'm going to try my best to again crisscross. So I'm making an X with my strings. I'm going to take this loop that's the string that's underneath and loop it on top, going back through that hole that I created and pulling that very carefully. Now hopefully 
if I need to, I can re-pull this bottom knot before and then put my finger there and then pull. If someone is home and they can help you with this just by holding that knot from moving, that'd be great. Now at this point, there's my excess string. I'm just gonna cut that. Oh, these are not great scissors. And I'm done, voila. You have now found your sketchbook and we're ready to sketch. Awesome.